Hello everybody and welcome to NeuralMarketTrends.com. I'm Thomas Ott, I'm your host, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Rapid Miner Server and how you can productionalize your processes and make them do some awesome things. So before we begin, I'm going to make the assumption that you already have Rapid Miner Studio and you've probably already installed Rapid Miner Server. Now, if you haven't installed Rapid Miner Server, it's pretty easy to do. You just have to go to the web page on rapidminer.com, download it, install it. Uh, I think it takes about eight steps or so. You gotta make sure you have the right Java version in, and you need to make sure that you have a database running in the back end to for the server to connect to. Now, that database could be in MySQL, or in my case, I have a post. Uh, GresQL um, database running, or it could be Oracle or SQL Server or something along those lines. So just check out the FAQs that are available on docs.rapidminer.com for all your various system settings. So what I have running here is I have version uh, RapidMiner version 8.1 and also server version 8.1 running on my laptop. So it's all local host. Everything is just locally. But I productionalize it by connecting it to the internet or by also doing things through Dropbox and so forth. So I'm not going to go over uh, anything related to RapidMiner Studio per se in this video. I'm just going to do a high level overview of this server uh, video here and show you what it looks like and then in my next video I'm going to kind of talk to you a little bit about how I actually put things into production and what I do with it so so first when you load up rapid miner server you have to bind it or you have to set a host name for it now a lot of times internally that will have some sort of IP number or it'll have some sort of URL name uh, in this case I have localhost and it's on port 8080 and once everything is installed correctly you can create a different user groups and so forth. Since I'm only doing this as localhost, I'm definitely the admin and I'm going to be uh, lo logging in as admin. So you put in admin, put in your password, and then you log in. And now you're just presented with the original front end of the Rapid Miner server here. And to navigate through all those parts of the web GUI here, you just want to take a look at over here on the left side. This is where you can access processes that have been stored on Rapid Miner server from, from Rapid Miner Studio by clicking on repository. You can browse through them. You can browse local data sets as well too that you may have stored. Or you can even search for various processes if you're a little bit lost. Then there's a process tab, and in here, where, that's where I spend a lot of my time right now. It's where I'm doing scheduling, putting in cron jobs, where I'm monitoring executions, where I'm setting up different queues using job agents. And we'll talk about job agents in a minute. This is a new feature with Rapid Miner Server 8, and it's a fantastic feature. It really solves a lot of the headaches that used to be in pre-version 8 of Rapid Miner Server related to queues. And then we have things like web services and triggers, and I'll show you a little bit about them. Now, administration is, of course, administration. This is where you can set up user groups. You can set up database connections or other connections to, say, Amazon S3 or Twitter, which is what I use. I have a connection of the server going to Twitter. Or making database connections and making them available to certain user groups. That's all done here. System settings, as well as the operators and extensions that you install to run Rapid Miner Server as well, too. And of course, last but not least, right, managing your licenses. Uh, you can do all do that from the web GUI here. Now, I'm not going to talk a little bit about documentation and links, but these are just ways to get back to the support or ways to get back to the document site on rapidminer.com. And last but not least, which we'll spend uh, probably a good few many videos on this, is the app designer. The app designer is a native dashboarding tool in Rapid Miner Server. It's definitely no Tableau and it's definitely no Click, but it is something pretty powerful and you can do quite a bit with it. So Rapid Miner Server can be an end-to-end -end solution for your team. You can use Studio to design your processes, do your data science, put it in production, and then you can actually create a visual dashboard to consume all that information for your end users. Okay, so let's just take a quick look here on Home. And when you go to Home on the Browse Repository tab here, you're going to be selected, you're going to be, I'm sorry, if you go to Browse Repository, 
and then you can click on this little home guy here it'll take you to the base folders and you could see here that I have a couple of uh, folders already set up I have an apps folder I have groups if I'm working in groups I have a home folder which will have um, each user will get their own home folder similar to what it is in Linux and then I have my projects folder where I actually have a lot of my uh, stuff that I'm running on rapid minor server regularly and, and so forth and if I were to say um, you know come here and take a look at my uh, public uh, Instagram keyword process that I'm currently trying to beta test with people. Um, you can click on here and you can see that it actually has um, a set of uh, processes and so forth. And I can click on this and then I can either do a few things. I can come over here to the right side. I can refresh, delete. I can even download it. I can upload it. I can run the process, schedule the process, even export it as a web service, as a REST API. So it's very, very simple to do all that from this interface. And it's also very important to know that you can upload or download processes. And this is handy because sometimes uh, when a new version of Rapid Miner comes out, the uh, people like to upgrade Rapid Miner Studio rather quickly, but the server may tend to be a little bit slower for upgrades. So this is a great workaround. Uh, you don't necessarily have to um, always make sure that the Rapid Miner Studio and server are in sync. It's preferably that they do version-wise, uh, but you can kind of work around with temporarily as you wait for the upgrade. Okay. Executions is perhaps the most interesting one here and you, this is what I monitor from a day-to-day -day basis and you can see here I run some processes. I run them on a regular crons type of schedule. When there's a beautiful green check mark it means they work. When there's a red X it means something broke. So I can come over here and I can either click on this process and I could rerun it again or reschedule it or if I go back I can come back here and I can click on what view details was and I can kind of see where the process broke. And it broke right here under execute Python. So maybe my Python script is not that good. So just something to think about. So let's go take a look at queues. Now queues are incredibly important. Uh, with the new version Rapid Miner 8, they introduced a job agent uh, system. These are actually ways to, to isolate each queue. So you can create a separate queue and the, the one that comes default is default. Uh, but I created three new queues, public, so if I'm running processes that are interacting with the public, they're completely compartmentalized. So if somebody in the public does something or causes the, the job agent to crash, it will not pull down the entire server. So it actually is isolated and it'll run the process in that container, that job agent. Each job agent will have, you can set the properties to have a certain... Um, uh, thread size, a, a, thir a certain uh, a RAM size, and so forth. You can do a lot of customized configurations with that particular job agent. Very, very, very handy in this particular case. Okay, let's take a look at web services. And here's where you do different things with web services. Here's where you take a process and you expose it as a REST API. So if I wanted to create a new one, I come over here to the right. And then all I would do is I would so give the new service name. I would come here and I would select a process that I want to productionalize, or I'm sorry, that I want to put as a REST service. And then I either select what type of REST service it's going to be. Is it XML, JSON, HTML, so forth. Even I can download a binary file if somebody hits it as well too. And then from here is where then I set um, the different um, MIME uh, types. It's either going to be, you know, in this case, XML or HTML or so forth. And this is where I actually can add macros. And I can sit there and I can actually pass the URL with URL parameters that interact with a macro. Very, very powerful stuff. And if you take a look at, I'm going to come back here and take a look at my Instagram hashtag one here. And I were to come to edit, you'll see here that I'm actually um, using a, I'm passing in the URL something called tag pass, which will pass hashtags to the hashtag, uh, I'm sorry, a hashtag URL query parameter, which will then pass something to a macro called tag pass in my uh, rapid minor, um, what do you call it, rapid minor process. So all really cool. And also too, what I have is I have set up triggers. So triggers are a great way for rapid minor to monitor either incoming emails or a folder. So I have here, whenever my beta testers upload a new file to a Dropbox, it monitors that for changes and then it kicks off the process and, and spits back something cool. So it's really, it's a really nice way to actually um, go ahead and kind of 
set it and forget it, upload, it does something and spits back a result, which is really, really cool. Of course, all green here means that it's active. It's red, it's not active. Okay, a couple of different things here. I'll touch base on these real quick. These are user management. You can create different groups. You can uh, create different users. Database connections. I don't have any, but if I wanted to uh, allow databases to connect uh, for users to use on the server, I would do it over here. And I do have connections here. I have uh, Dropbox and Twitter connections so that the Rapid Miner server can execute processes that use, um, that use these different uh, endpoints, so to speak. And then, of course, system settings. Here's where I uh, talk. Here's where you can add different things. You can see here that I set my Python scripting path, and it's set to Python 3.5. So you can do all that in here as well, too. Uh, operators and extensions is also important if your Rapid Miner uh, Studio processes uses, say, the uh, text mining or the text processing extension, and you save that process and want to run it on the server. You better make sure that that extension is installed on the server as well. So if I come over here to extensions, you could see here everything that is installed. I have Python scripting, R scripting, text processing, web mining, word to vec uh, and I think I also have operator toolbox and so forth in there. So I did all those different things. Now, here's something that you need to be aware of. If you install these extensions on Rapid Miner server, you need to install those extensions on each job agent that's going to be using them. So that's important. That took me a long time to figure out and I pulled my hair out until I went to the community.rapidmire.com and somebody posted about it. So it's really good. And there's also a little tweak when it comes to Python as well too. I'll share that in another video. Okay, and of course system information. This tells you how much memory you're using and so forth. And then managing, you know, you have preferences here and you have managing license and so forth. And well, and that's it. That's just a very brief overview of the basic interface of Rapid Miner Server. Uh, next time we may talk a little bit about the App Designer, which is a great way to create some uh, visual uh, dashboarding. And how do you go from, say, this Rapid Miner Studio process to putting it into production on Rapid Miner Server? So this is Thomas Ott for NeuralMarketTrends.com, and I hope you enjoyed the, this video on a quick introduction to Rapid Miner Server. Make sure to like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I look forward to bringing you the next one. Thank you. Have a great day.